Hello everyone. Welcome to the English for Practice Test lecture. Your regular lecturer could not be here today, uh, so I will uh, go through today's uh, practice written test. Um, the written test will be next week. It will feature uh, 35 questions. Today's test, uh, the practice written test, will feature 17. Okay, so we're going to have 17 questions for you to answer. Uh, sorry, 18 questions. 18 questions that we'll go through today. Um, in the first lecture, we will get uh, about half of those done. And uh, then we'll go on to the other uh, half for the second lecture. Okay. Uh, for the lecture, we're going to refer to the practice written test. That is the homework that has been given to you today or for this week. So you can do the test and um, probably the best thing to do is to do the test first and then um, you can listen to the lecture as we go over the answers. Okay, So I want to make sure that you have the correct answers. Okay. Um, now in the in the test there are two parts. Okay. Uh, the first part, you're going to have about 30 different questions, and the 30 different questions uh, are going to be of the multiple choice variety. Okay. Right. So again, for the multiple choice questions, you're given a question stem, and you're going to to read the question, uh, and then you're going to choose uh, four from four possible answers, uh, the correct answer. Okay. All right. So again, uh, sometimes you'll have a question and answer. Uh, sometimes you'll just fill in the blank with one of the words. Okay. Uh, so today we're going to look at about 13 different uh, multiple choice questions. And then in part two, uh, you're going to write an appropriate answer for each question by using a full and complete sentence. Okay. Um, single word answers will be marked wrong. Okay. So again, you'll have to write a complete sentence. Notice that the in part two the um, in part two the the points given to each uh, question uh, is five. Okay. Sorry, two or five questions. Two points each, you'll have a total of 10. Okay. Uh, okay. So what, now that you know how to do the test, okay, and again, for part two, you're just going, you're given a question and you're going to answer the question as best you can in the space provided. Okay. Um, so we'll look at that later. So, and also none of these questions are on the, uh, the written test next week. Okay, these are just here to give you an example of the types of questions, but also the uh, areas from which the uh, questions were taken from. Okay. Uh, for example, question number one is taken from unit four. Okay? When you see the topic, you will understand that it was studied in unit four. Okay. Okay. Let's start at the beginning at uh, number one, the aforementioned number one, uh, the aforementioned number one, where I mentioned unit four. Okay. Uh, so again, maybe now would be a good time to press pause and uh, just do the test. Okay. Do the test. Do it as best you can, and when you're finished, listen to my explanation, and we'll check the answers, and I'll explain why. Uh, the correct answers are correct 
and the incorrect answers are wrong. Okay. All right. So pause, do the test, and then we will resume. Okay, I assume you're back now from doing the test. Uh, was it difficult? Okay, I hope it was challenging, but not too difficult. Okay, let's check this out. We're going to start with number, we're going to start with the first six right here. We're going to do them as a group. Okay, and we'll start, of course, with number one. Okay, uh, number one. Which word is a type of personality? Okay, so I'm hoping that uh, on the written test, we don't have something that's uh, blatantly used for, uh, for vocabulary. Uh, these first six questions are all based on vocabulary, uh, but we're also going to be testing you on grammar, as you'll see in a moment. Okay. So which word is a type of personality? Okay. Uh, the answer? How about A, reserved? Okay, right. So that's something we studied in Unit 4. You might remember the cartoon. There was a picture of a man uh, standing in uh, the edge of the room, maybe a bit shy. Okay, so the answer for number one is A, okay. reserved. Okay, he's kind of reserving his, his, his um, feelings. Okay. He's uh, maybe quiet. He's not, um, not sort of dominating the room. He's not being too loud or too noticed in the room. Okay. Uh, if you don't know the word uh, reserved, you might also know that sculpture is not a type of personality. Okay. Sculpture is a type of art. You have famous Giacometti statues, or in front of the um, uh, in front of the Dosaguan, you know there is a uh, sculpture of Rodin, his, uh, his sculpture of the thinker. Okay? I don't think it's the real one. Okay? But that is a sculpture. It's a type of art. Just like still life, it's a type of painting, and portrait, which is also a type of painting. Okay? Okay? Usually still life uh, most um, recognized uh, the portraits, or sorry, the uh, paintings of uh, fruit. Okay, and a portrait, of course, is a painting of a person. Okay, so these are all types of art. The only type of personality is this reserved. Okay. Uh, he has a reserved type of personality. Number one, the answer is A. Okay, number two, which of these are for finding information? Okay, so another vocabulary question. Uh, which of these are for finding information? So which of these things? Okay, so which of these are things? Okay, now careless is an adjective. Okay. Um, so that won't be it. Uh, and graffiti, we studied that. Uh, graffiti is a, a Italian word uh, referring to uh, something that is painted on the side of the building, usually words. Okay, we talked about the artist Banksy. Okay, um, anyway, not for finding information. You might learn something from the graffiti, but you're not searching information. Okay? That leaves down to two electronic uh, devices: smartphone and Nintendo. Nintendo is a gaming option. Okay, so it's a gaming uh, console. Okay. And the answer for number two is going to be A, a smartphone. Okay. So everyone's got a smartphone, um, and you can use this for finding information, among other, among other things. Okay. You can uh, use your smartphone for many things, but one of them, finding information. Number one, the answer is A. Number two, the answer is A. Three, he ran blank to catch his flight. Okay, so we have a man running and the purpose to catch his flight. Okay, so he had to catch his flight, so he ran. Maybe he was late. Okay, so how did he run? 
We know that because he ran to catch his flight. This sentence is correct on its own. Okay? We don't need another word. Subject, verb, okay, and then a preposition. Okay? So that's what the purpose of his running. He ran in order to run. So we're going to use this word to describe run or the past tense ran. So we're looking for an, an adverb. Abroad is a place and amazing is an adjective. He ran to catch his amazing flight. <laughs> okay, I never heard someone uh, call their flight amazing. Okay, um, but anyway, we're not describing flight. We're describing the word next to the adverb uh, ran. Okay, we're describing a verb. It must be an adverb like these two words that end in ly. The answer is B, quickly. Okay. He ran pessimistically to catch his flight. I don't think I'm going to catch my flight. All right, so quickly he ran. Okay, so quickly describes the action here, running. Okay, he didn't run slowly. He might miss his flight. Number three, answer is B. Number four, don't buy this trick photo. It's a blank. I wonder what it is. Don't buy this trick photo. It's a. Okay, so these are all nouns. Okay, and we studied this in Unit 10. So in Unit 10, we looked at uh, maybe <laughs> looked at maybe uh, a lot of hoaxes, maybe a lot of other things that may or may not be true. Okay, so don't buy this trick photo. Okay, uh, the answer is A. A hoax. Okay, it's somebody who's trying to trick you. Okay. Uh, a rumor. Okay. So a rumor might be something that's also untrue. But sometimes the rumors turn out to be true. A sighting is something that you witnessed. Uh, the photo is something someone else witnessed. And a prediction, something that's going to happen. Okay, they're talking about a thing, okay, an actual object. Okay, but it's a hoax. It's a trick photo. It's not a real photo. It's fake. Okay. The answer for number four, A. Number five, Tim blank his head. Okay, so we've got the subject, got the object. What's the verb? Okay. Uh, permed his head, shaved his head, manicured his head, pierced his head. Ugh. Okay, piercing are is usually used for uh, certain body parts, but you, often not the head. Maybe you might pierce your ear, or your lip, or your nose, or parts of your head, but not your actual head, not the the the, the main part of your head, just parts that stick out. Okay, from your head. Uh, D is incorrect. C, manicured. Okay, so this is something referring to um, uh, your hands or your, um, yeah, so your hands. So when you get your nails uh, cleaned, uh, cut, filed, okay, that's manicure, but just for your hands and fingernails. Permed is used for hair. So Tim permed his hair, okay, but he shaved his head. Okay, so he now he can't do anything with his hair. Okay. He shaved his head. He shaved his own head. Okay. He didn't get somebody to shave. He didn't get his head or hair shaved. Um, didn't get his head shaved. He shaved his head. Answer for number five, B. Okay. All right. Number six. Number six, I watched a blank blank called Running Man. Okay, that gets a reference to the uh, famous uh, TV show here in Korea uh, with all those uh, <laughs> all those men who meet people, go places. I think you know what I'm talking about, Running Man. Okay, 
So uh, basically, what kind of program is Running Man? Is it a music video? Is it a sports program? Is it uh, a drama? Or is it a reality show? Okay, the answer is D. Okay. So again, these individuals go on these uh, adventures together. Okay. They use their real names. Okay, they're not actors who are using uh, the names of characters. That would be a drama. Okay. They're not playing sports. Okay. And there might be music. And it might look like a vi music video, um, but okay, so it's, it has nothing to do with music. They're not musicians or singers. Okay, they're it's a reality show. It's a show that actually happens with the real people doing real things, usually spontaneous. Okay, or, or at, at that time. Number six, the answer is D, reality show. Okay, so I think we know reality show. It is a a show that is not uh, prepared, produced, uh, it's not um, scripted. I guess that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so it's real people doing real things, maybe prepared, but uh, they actually happen. All right, um, seven. We're gonna keep going here. Uh, we're gonna maybe finish out the bottom part of the page. We'll try the next few questions here. Okay, uh, number seven, she's been playing the guitar blank she was young. Okay. All right, so number seven, uh, we know this from studying unit one. Okay, she's been playing the guitar um, before she was young, two she was young, since on. Okay, the answer is since. Now, this is something uh, we studied last semester in English 3, okay, or when you studied English 3, okay. Uh, right, so she has been playing. So we're looking at the um, uh, progressive, uh, <laughs> the present perfect continuous, present perfect progressive, I guess they call it in the textbook, okay. Uh, but the present perfect uh, progressive um, something she is doing right now and has been doing it for some time. Okay, so she started in the past, she was doing it then, and she's doing it now, and that is playing the guitar. Okay, so it's something she has not stopped doing. Okay, she started sometime in the past, she continues to do it now. That's why I call it the continuous tense. She's been playing the guitar since she was young. So you know how it works with the words for and since? Okay. When you use the word for, we're usually talking about a period of time. Okay. Um, so we might say for for all this. But if this is now, okay, if this point here is now, and this is when she started to play the guitar, okay, she's doing it since, since this point here. And this is now. And in between four, okay. So she's been playing the guitar since she was young. So I don't know how long that has been, but I know when she started, okay. Number seven, the answer is C. Uh, number eight, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you, okay. I blank sent you a message. Okay, so there's an apology and something the person did not do. They didn't tell, or I didn't tell you. Okay, it was quiet. It was a secret. Okay. Okay. Now, so what's the missing word? Okay. So we're looking at. Uh, I'm gonna break this down. I think we're basically got two modals: should, would. And then the negative forms. All of these have the word have afterwards. So it's either going to be positive or, sh or negative, should or would. Okay. Okay. So the answer is A. Okay. I'm sorry I didn't tell you. 
I should have sent you a message. Okay, so when you use should have, this is something like uh, it's something we use for regrets. And a regret is uh, what we use for uh, something you feel bad about or something you uh, wish you could change about your past. So um, often we use the word should for advice, okay, for any time. Uh, so I think tomorrow you should do this, or I think uh, whenever you do this, you should do this. Okay, so I'm giving advice about what would be a good idea to do or a good thing to do. It's what you should do. Okay, but now we're talking about the past. We can see it here. I didn't tell you. So we're talking about the past. So something in the past I didn't do, I didn't tell you. Okay. So I'm giving advice I should have. So much like uh, we use this for the word have for uh, the present perfect, okay? But we're talking about uh, events in the past, okay? So I should have sent you a message, okay? The opposite, I shouldn't have sent you a message. <laughs> Don't worry, you didn't, okay? Uh, would, uh, now we would give this for a solution, okay? Oh, you didn't tell him? Oh, if it were me, I would have sent a message. Okay. And of course, the negative form of that. Okay. So this is not, you're not providing a solution for another person. You're talking about a solution that you yourself should have done. Okay. So you can give this, uh, you have regrets for yourself. You can give advice to yourself in the past. Um, or for another person. Okay? This person is talking about his own regret, something he should have done. He should have sent this person a message. I should have sent you a message. Number eight, the answer is A. All right, number nine. Uh, if I be verb a celebrity i would take a limousine to school okay now in all these answers here you have the be verb one, one is actually be letter b okay and then there are conjugations okay uh, three of them are in the present tense one's in the past tense okay now quite simply um uh, a couple of these are wrong i is when does the subject I go with is, okay? So A is incorrect. And B, uh, the only time we use B unconjugated is if we're using it for um, something like the future tense where you are preceding it with a, uh, a future phrase like uh, be going to. So I'm going to be happy if you do well on your test. Okay. It's an example right there. So again, in the basic, the B verb would be uh, am. Um, uh, in connection with the uh, future tense, uh, but the, the, the main verb of the sentence would be be in that case. Anyway, it doesn't conjugate with I. Okay. Uh, so Sorry, I doesn't agree with I. Um, so a C or D, All right? So if I am a celebrity or if I were. So one of these must be correct. Uh, now, if I am a celebrity, this would have to be different. This would have to be will, okay? So that's because we're using uh, the future tense of the, sorry, the present tense of the uh, modal as well as the be verb, okay? But if that was you know, if that was am okay it's not and so it must be wrong the answer the past tense of be okay so if i were a celebrity i would take a limousine to school good okay so again uh, again it's the same verb different uh in this case different conjugations of the present tense and one past tense okay so you might be, if you didn't know the answer, you might think it might be the present tense. It is not. It's not present here. 
at uh, the past, so this will be past as well. If I am a celebrity, I will take a limousine to school. If I were a celebrity, I would take a limousine to school. Okay. So that's the difference between the first and second uh, conditional. Okay, uh, that concludes the first lecture. Uh, I'm going to continue the lecture. Okay, so we have 18 questions to do today and uh, we finished nine. So I will finish uh, question number 10 in the next lecture. Okay, and Also in the next lecture, I will review um, the second homework, which is questions 11 till 18. Okay. So uh, get the second piece of homework, uh, get the second lecture, and we will continue with number 10 and the second piece of homework. Okay, I'll see you in lecture number two.